Have you ever made a connection between a book and a work of art? That the images in the book were very similar to those in the art? My name is Ruth Dwyer, I'm an art historian, and that's what happened to me when I compared very closely. A manuscript known as the Juliana Codex, the mosaics of Ravenna, Italy, and the Church of the Hagia Sophia in Istanbul. All of them 6th century. Armed with a camera, and the manuscript known as the Juliana Codex, wonderful discoveries were made. All observations and conclusions are my own. The mosaics of Ravenna are adorned with many flowers and plants. They are plentiful and colorful and visible on all of the buildings decorated during the tenure of the bishop whom the Emperor Justinian installed at Ravenna, Maximianus. Scholars have not discussed these plants and flowers presumably because it has been assumed that they are purely decorative. They are not. It will become evident that the flowers, vines, and plants have medicinal properties and that they address issues related to the era when they were made, starvation and the ravages of plague. The 540s, during the time that the mosaics were being made, was a time of terrible climate change. In the year 536, the Earth had a close encounter with a comet, which rained a great deal of debris into the atmosphere, resulting in decades of terrible cold, drought, famine, and the illness known as Justinian's Plague. This I discussed in my Comet of 536 in the Ravenna Mosaics. In Justinian's empire, most crops failed. Millions of people died. The Mosaics of Ravenna have a number of layers of meaning, including documenting this time of terrible hardship. Another layer of meaning related to the hardship involves Zanicia Juliana, a Roman imperial princess. Her manuscript of medicinal flowers and plants, the Juliana Anicia Codex, also known as the Vienna Discoritis, and her church, St. Polyuctus. Also involved are the Emperor Justinian, the Empress Theodora, and Justinian's magnificent church in Constantinople, the Hagia Sophia, built 20 years after Juliana's church was begun. Let us examine the frontispiece of Juliana's manuscript, which was presented to her in the year 512. It contains her portrait set within an octogram, a double square which is intertwined. Marble ruins were found in the rubble of her church, St. Polyuctus, which she built adjacent to her palace in Constantinople. This same octogram is to be seen in the ruins. At the center of the marble octogram is a monogram. Since this was Juliana's church, the monogram is most probably hers. Interestingly, according to the accounts of medieval Constantinople, Juliana's church also functioned as a medical center. Healing cures were performed. The pains of many people were relieved. This would certainly explain why Juliana was presented with a manuscript of medicinal plants, the one in which we have seen her portrait with the octogram. Juliana's manuscript, a 6th century copy of Dioscorida's Demeteria Medica, was presented to her in 512, the same year that the foundations were laid for her church, suggesting that one of the intentions of the church from its beginning was that it function as a healing center. When we turn to the portrait of the woman next to Theodora in her imperial panel at San Vitale, we see the octogram prominently displayed on her gown. It is intriguing that we discover octograms, many of them, in Justinian's Hagia Sophia in Istanbul. Remember, it was begun 20 years after the manuscript. We find them in mosaic and in marble on the second floor, most of them on the south side. We will return to these shortly. Let us examine some of the plants of Juliana's manuscript and compare them to the mosaics of Ravenna. The white lily, or Lilium candidum, plate 176, is seen in profile. One of its purposes is to help people suffering from stomach disorders. The lily in Juliana's codex has more than three petals, the three-petaled, stylized lily, which we see in the Ravenna mosaics, has a precedent in Ravenna, 
It is evident in the 5th century church of San Giovanni Evangelista, built by Galla Placidia, Anicia Juliana's ancestor. The white lily of 6th century Ravenna is seen, also in profile, in literally every building which was decorated by Maximianus, Justinian's bishop. In San Vitale, San Apollinaire in Classa, the Archiepiscopal Chapel, and in San Apollinaire Nuovo, where the lily is at the feet of the Madonna. The stylized lily, shown in profile with three principal petals, is a format which is consistent throughout Ravenna. Also at her feet is a four-petaled white flower, the Capara spinosa, plate 172 in the Codex. This plant has anti-inflammatory properties. The third plant at the Madonna's feet is a red and white flower. In the Codex, it is plate 16, the Althea officinalis. Its purpose was to nourish people suffering from starvation. We see this flower frequently in Ravenna, in mosaic, and it is often depicted in company with the white lily. When we look at the dresses of Theodora and the woman next to her in her imperial panel, we see that both of their dresses are embroidered with the same red and white flowers. Let us compare these to the Althea Ficinalis in Juliana's manuscript. They are both seen in profile. Both have a green cup-like base known as the receptacle, and this has an irregular upper edge. Each petal is divided evenly between white at its base and red at the outer edge. Where the white meets the red is again irregular. The outer perimeter of the red is irregular. The manuscript and mosaic flowers match. Theodora and the woman next to her are both wearing a flower which is used for nourishment during times of starvation. There is another detail of the mosaics which is fascinating a geometric design on Theodora's dress. It consists of a series of triangles topped by a circle. When we compare it to the marble fragment from Juliana's Church of St. Paul Euctus, we see that the octogram is surrounded by the identical geometrical motif, a series of triangles, each topped by a circle. The many-petaled Matricaria Parthenium in mosaic in Juliana's St. Paul Euctus, as well as in Santa Apollinaire and Classa, is also in marble in the Hagia Sophia near the Empress Theodora's place of honor overlooking the nave. Women who live through times of famine and starvation often lose their monthly cycles. Justinian and Theodora wanted to have children. This flower, as a warm infusion, assists in the return of the monthly cycle. The Juniperus Phoenicia, plate 33, used for skin infections and gastrointestinal issues, is on the ceiling of San Vitale, and the Euphorbia dendroides, a small tree or shrub whose sap is used to treat festering wounds, is in the mosaic garden in the apse of Santa Apollinaire and Classa. Open, weeping wounds were an issue during Justinian's plague. We know that Justinian fell ill with the plague, but that he survived. In Constantinople and Ravenna, there is some importance given to two plants, which may give us an insight into the treatment which saved him. The capitals of some of the columns of Juliana's church are identical to capitals found in San Vitale. I have demonstrated in my Boethius Justinian and the Ravenna Mosaics that these capitals represent the collection of sap from the frankincense tree. Frankincense has a number of medicinal properties, including the healing of wounds that are open and superating. Frankincense is used on the wound and sometimes rubbed on the bottom of the feet. In San Vitale we see, in mosaic, a man with black sores on his face. He is obviously suffering from the plague. The marble frankincense capital is nearby. Justinian was declared Caesar in 525, in his own church, the Caesar's wreath would logically represent him. In the Hagia Sophia, the church which Justinian built, is a marble panel with the Caesar's wreath that is accompanied by a unique vine with arrow-shaped leaves. It is also to be found in St. Apollinaire and Classa. This vine matches the Convolvula scimonia, 
plate 331 in Julianus Codex. Such a pairing suggests that this vine was used to treat his illness. It is interesting to discover that the sap from this plant is described as a violent gastrointestinal irritant, which acts along the entire elementary canal and causes a thorough and complete cleansing. Due to the prominence given to these two plants in the Hagia Sophia and in San Vitale, both under the jurisdiction of Justinian, it is logical to deduce that the Convolvula scamonia of Juliana's manuscript and the frankincense seen on the capital in her healing center were used as medicines to help save Justinian's life. Many of the flowers and plants of San Vitale and other Ravenna mosaics are medicinal. On the ceiling of San Vitale they share space with animals, which are also in the Juliana Anica manuscript. For instance, a white ibis in her codex is holding a curling snake in his beak. His far leg is stepping forward. On the mosaic ceiling of San Vitale, we see a white ibis with a curling snake in his beak, also with his far leg stepping forward. There is an owl in her manuscript sitting in three-quarter view, his face turning toward us. On the ceiling of San Vitale are two owls, also sitting in three-quarter view, with their faces turning toward us. Since Juliana's codex is dated 30 years earlier than the mosaics, we can deduce that her manuscript served as a model for the flowers and animals which we have seen in Ravenna. Boethius, in his Consolation of Philosophy, mentions a number of birds and animals and fish, which I discussed in my Boethius, Justinian, and the Ravenna mosaics. These are also on the ceiling and share space with the birds and animals of Juliana Anicius Codex. So, Given the presence of the octogram on Juliana's botanical manuscript and on the marble of her church medical center of St. Polyuctos, and on the dress, and given that the flower embroidery on her dress matches exactly an important flower in the Juliana Anicia Codex, a flower which was used to nourish the starving, and given that this portrait is located in San Vitale, and that the church is decorated with plants and flowers which are in the Juliana Codex, we must consider the possibility that this is a Nicu Juliana. There is more. There are visual connections to the Emperor Justinian. One of the connections involves a ring. Prior to building his Hagia Sophia, Justinian came to a Nicu Juliana for a donation of gold. She gave him instead a ring with a green stone, an emerald. The woman wearing the octogram is also displaying prominently a ring with a green stone. Here is a detail. It has been assumed by most historians that this was considered an insult and that there was a rivalry between Juliana and Justinian. But apparently Justinian was pleased with the ring, gave thanks, praised her, and then returned to his palace. These mosaics and marble panels suggest a profound and agreeable connection between the Aniki, both Boethius and Juliana, with Justinian and Theodora, not a rivalry. In the Hagia Sophia we see both Juliana's octogram and the Matricaria Parthenium, which is also in mosaic in Juliana's St. Polyuctus. The Convolvula Scamonia from her manuscript is at the Hagia Sophia, Justinian also decorated his church with many theta symbols, the ancient version a circle with a cross, which represents theta, the highest wisdom. This theta is to be found in gold at the center of the octogram on the dress. Here is a detail. I have done an overlay of the theta in black so that we may see it more easily. The connections between Anicu Juliana and Justinian are many and profound as are the extraordinary connections between Anicu Juliana and the woman next to Theodora, we can conclude that this woman is Anicu Juliana. In my Boethius Justinian and the Ravenna Mosaics, I demonstrated that Boethius is standing next to Justinian. Like Juliana, Boethius was a prominent member of the Roman Anicu family. Even though Juliana lived in Constantinople, she was the daughter of a Roman emperor and always declared that she was Roman.
the presence of two illustrious aniki next to the emperor and empress speaks volumes about the impact and influence which they and their books had on Justinian and the empire in the 6th century. Justinian's buildings demonstrate a wish to pursue Theta, the highest wisdom. He attended to every detail of their design. His buildings reflect Boethius's translations of the Quadrivium and his philosophical tract, The Constellation of Philosophy, Compendia of the Highest, theoretical wisdom. Anicia Juliana's botanical manuscript represented the highest practical wisdom, medicine. Is it any wonder in one building we have two members of the Aniki family, Boethius and Juliana, standing in places of honor next to the emperor and empress? And is it any wonder that their presence attests to the fact that Justinian and Theodora are in command of all wisdom? both theoretical and practical. <laughs>